You know, I don't know if Donald Trump thinks he's going to win this debate on Thursday night. Over the last few days, Donald Trump and his team have been laying the groundwork. They've been preparing their base for the potential of him losing to Joe Biden in the very first presidential debate of this election cycle on Thursday night. First, it was a claim that Joe Biden was taking some performance enhancing drugs. Watch this clip. Those drugs are out there. They treat the cognition part of it. They try to, you know, uh, make it where he can think straighter and, and he's not lost and confused as much. And then there's drugs that actually just increase, increase alertness like Adderall and other types of amphetamine type drugs, maybe pro vigil, things like that. And then there's a host of drugs that try to take the agitated edge off of most of these cognitive disorders. So I feel like they're probably giving him a little bit of all of this. They just have to get it just right. They all have different uh, times of onset. They have different duration. Uh, they interact with each other. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a challenge, but uh, I think uh, I think they, they, they have no choice with uh, what they're working with. Uh, they don't they don't have much to work with. That's former White House physician turned MAGA politician Ronnie Jackson from Texas. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This this theory is rich coming from Representative Jackson, because you may remember that back in 2018, a report was released by Senator John Tester from Montana. Um, he's a ranking member of the Senate Committee on Veterans Affairs, and he, he claimed in that report that Jackson was allegedly giving out large supplies of the opiate Percocet without going through proper protocols and procedures. The report also alleged that White House staffers had nicknamed Jackson the Candyman after witnessing his loose approach to prescribing this controlled substance. So one would think that he, of all people, <laughs> shouldn't be talking about pushing pills and, and which pills are being used and given to who to you know, enhance their performance. Some folks are saying that every accusation coming from this side is actually a confession. So that's the first problem. They're so convinced that Trump is likely to lose that they're already preparing their Trump cult members to believe that Biden has been given some unfair performance enhancing drug advantage. The second thing here is that Trump is claiming that he is that he isn't going to lose, that he's going to let Biden win. Watch this. Maybe I'm better off losing the debate. I'll, I'll make sure he says I'll lose the debate on purpose. Maybe I'll do something like that. I assume he's going to be uh, somebody that will be a worthy debater. Should I be tough and nasty and just say you're the worst president in history? Or should I be nice and calm and let him speak? You know, I haven't heard this kind of excuse in a long time. He hit the American people with I'm not fired. I quit kind of treatment. Very mature. Very mature. First, you claim that Biden is being drugged. Second, you claim that you're going to lose on purpose to really own the libs. And since no one believes either of those two, your only other option is to attack the moderators. In fact, Trump spokesperson Caroline Levitt couldn't even finish an interview the other night because she was so busy, so focused on attacking CNN moderator and commentator and host Jake Tapper. Watch this. So he's basically saying there, well, will I let uh, Joe Biden win? Uh, it does seem as though many Republicans have set the bar very low uh, in terms of arguing that Joe Biden is basically uh, senile. Uh, now you have people like Doug Burgum coming out and saying, well, uh, President Biden's very accomplished, trying to set expectations in a different place. Uh, what do you expect uh, from Joe Biden? Well, first of all, it's it would take someone five minutes to Google Jake Tapper, Donald Trump, to see that Jake Tapper has ma consistently we're stop frequently this interview if you're going to keep President attacking Trump my colleagues. Hilter. Uh, Ma'am, I'm going to stop no, this interview I'm, if you I'm continue stating, to attack my colleagues. I would like to talk about Joe Biden stating, and Donald Trump, who you work for. Yes. If you are here we, to speak on his behalf, and I, I am will willing to have this conversation. I am stating facts that your colleagues have stated in the past. Okay. Now, uh, as I'm for sorry, this guys, debate, we're going to come back out to the panel. For, Caroline, thank you very much for your time. You are welcome to come back at any point. She is welcome to come back and speak about Donald Trump. And Donald Trump will have equal time to Joe Biden when they both join us now at next early later this week in Atlanta for this debate. Our thanks to Caroline. I think the shocking thing in all of this is that that's a win for the Trump side. They see that 
in their mind, they see obstinance and uh, a lack of cooperation, a lack of civility, an unwillingness to to actually kind of engage in a good faith dialogue. They see that as a win. That's their platform. Of course, they took that and Steve Bannon on his show, they took that and turned it into a reason to call for Trump to drop out of the debate entirely. Watch this. I've never seen such disrespect. They have never in the history of television ever, ever taken a national press secretary and treated her with such lack of respect. Cassie Hunt owes you an apology. CNN owes you an apology today. And we don't get that apology to Caroline Levitt and to the Trump campaign and to MAGA today. President Trump should cancel this. It is beyond obvious that they don't want this man in the debate. Actually, I have a theory about all of this. I think that the more the American people see Donald Trump, the more they are convinced that he isn't the right person to lead this country. I think more Trump is bad for Trump. And I actually have a theory that on the other side, because we get so many clips and doctored images and out of context moments that we see of Joe Biden, we're inundated with these biased, uh, cut, oddly cut images of Joe Biden, that on the other hand, the more the American people see Joe Biden acting in real time as president, the more competent he actually appears and the more folks feel confident that he is the right person to lead this country between our two options. I'm anticipating that his performance at the debate will actually be a net positive for his chances of winning this November. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I love to hear what you think about this debate, how it's going to go down in Atlanta this Thursday night. I'm thinking about going down there and I might take you guys with me on location for this debate. We'll see if that actually works out. But in the meantime, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm Garrison Hayes. I'm guest hosting for Jesse Dollimore this week. I kind of jumped right in it today. And so I'm guest hosting hosting uh, here this week. I'd love it if you would subscribe to this channel. And then if you go over and sub- subscribe to my channel, you can find that information down below. You can also follow me on social media at Garrison underscore Hayes on Twitter or X at Garrison H on Instagram. Of course, Jesse's social media handles are just below. I think you can find links to other ways to support this channel. It's a great channel, by the way. You should be subscribed. Are you subscribed? If you aren't, go ahead and get subscribed. Uh, Again, let us know what you think down in the comments. As always, glad you're here. We'll see you in the next one.